first off, I feel like every team has a chip on their shoulder when they play yeah. against you guys. Coach, you said good days and bad days, scouts? Yeah, that's how I go. You don't get to pick your days. You don't get to pick your days when they come and you have a good day. They show up when they want to because they're dropping the you. <laughs> so that's how I go for the pros. That's how it is. And they, make, they come to games when you play good and bad. So you got to be able to bounce it up. That's what pro basketball is. It's not I can get on social media and give me a Swiss culture uh, highlight and it'd be okay. <laughs> yep. You got to live that highlight. No. Nope. So the cold part about the highlights is great. Then they got to live live up to that. And that's the responsibility of that. It's great. You got to live up to it. You got to be your best when your best is needed. screen on me, I'm going to
All right, so first question is, you've been coaching in the G League for three years. Yeah. Please tell everybody how different the competition is now than it is before. You got three two ways. Yeah. Also, you have a lot of picks. A lot of the top picks are playing in the G. It's a lot different than it was when the D League and the G League first came around. Just talk about how it's grown. So, the, so from our first year in 2021-22 season was different. It still was trending with older veterans still trying to make it to the NBA. That has changed now. The G League consists of young guys, 24, 25 year olds, and other teams that gave up on it. And now they're now they what they were supposed to be, better. Along with three two ways, right? And then lottery picks on them particular teams. So anytime you play a G League team now, the players that's on the court are being picked by the GMs of the big team, sending them down to play with the minor league team. So you have more. Um, NBA talent level that's being placed here by the Miami Heats, by the Houston Rockets. They're sending their guys who they think are NBA guys down here, right? Because you have an NBA, you have a G League GM as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you probably pick the regular roster. The NBA players come down here from, through the NBA team. So it's more. Yep. So like when we played Utah earlier this year, we got blasted, and it was our first game on the road. They had three two ways and two lottery picks. Yeah, Bryce Sensaba and, and Taylor Hendricks. Correct. Yep. And so those picks were made by Danny Ainge, the same guy who picked Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown. So um, the talent level is at an all-time high in the G. The problem with the G is it's a developmental league, so people don't take it serious because teams send their guys out here to get reps, mm -hmm. right? And so it's, they're developing those guys, so people don't take it serious because they think that since they send them down, nobody's trying to win. Yep. Talent-wise, it's off the chain. It's just not a lot of, uh, it's not, not a, a lot, enough NBA roster spots. Yep, and then talk about being here First off, I feel like every team has a chip on their shoulder when they play yeah. against you guys. Number one, there's a million scouts in the, in the gym. People right. don't realize that. So you're getting your best shot from everybody, even though y'all have the young team. Yeah. I don't think people realize that element. Can you, you know explain what, that? That's something we kind of harp with our players, that you got to come ready and be prepared for um, some hard basketball. You know, guys are you know trying to make – they have the same dream as you. And so what that does is it raises their anxiety, but it makes them play at a level – if they have to every night, they, we don't. They don't get any buy game, so we're not whining about it. Just what it is, and it's got, it makes them better in the long haul. So when they do get to the NBA, their respect level for the opponent is already there. Yep. And then last question is, um, just today, you know, I practice. You got two scouts here. I know you coach at USC. There's times where it's like a specific time where the scout could come. How has it been this whole year in terms of scouts coming in, in and out of the gym? Is that throughout the whole process? So this is my third year coaching at night. Obviously, we have more young prospects than we ever had. Mm -hmm. I've seen this is the most scouts from the beginning of the season up to this far that I've seen. Um, preferably because we got a lot of different uh, players all over the, the draft board. But um, these guys don't get to pick and choose when they play good. And that's what we are for tonight. Like, Play bad and the scout come, that's just what it is. You got the NBA's 82 games, you got to come back. But they don't get to pick and choose and who's coming for a visitor today. In college, we would tell guys, you got this coming. No, I don't do that. Because you got to be your best every day. You got to be your best when it's needed. So my job is not to warn who's coming. I teach them, my job is to teach them to be ready every single day. So just how you seen two scouts come in, they looking probably like, okay, who? We know y'all lost yesterday. Who coming in? Who working hard today? Or who's, who's dogging it in skill work? And so what they looking for is totally different with, than what these kids uh, normally get graded on. With having so many uh, prospects this year, you guys do have a lot. What do you say is like the biggest adjustment? Uh, of course, the three-point line, because I know sometimes people yeah. like a percentage. Yeah. And then what about being on the island too as well? Yeah, well, like, so we play a lot of games, so they skip the part of the college part where they need multiple days in practice. So we may play 
four games in six days. On that fifth day, I can't really practice because they probably physically and got beat up and tired. So a lot of their learning comes in the game. A day like this, in between games, I had to do like a, sim a walkthrough type practice, speed and intensity. But yeah, it's, it's defense, the speed of the game, and obviously the three-point line. Um, this is where you learn what you're good at and what you're not. Because the other team is a pro coach down there, so he's going to make you play to your uh, non-strengths. So, so these guys start to learn, okay, damn, I was a shooter in high school, I'm not now. So now that's where they start to get to, um, I got to do this a little bit more and do less of that. Yep, and then my last question, I yeah, promise fine. this no, time. Um, think Pate. Yeah. I think that he's is a big example of a lot of times people look at these rankings and feel like, oh, that's what they ignite go after. Yeah. People don't realize Dink wasn't ranked that high. No. You went out and found him. Yeah. What can you say to the kids out there that are, like, in the 70s, 60s, yeah. and feel like they're getting overlooked? Like, I feel like y'all going to find them if y'all like them. Yeah, and it's, and it's not just for here or for Ignite. It's just like, man, like, Steph Curry and Damian Lillard's stories need to be – that's it. That's all you need. To, that, like, use their life as your own testament. Like – that's how it is, and they didn't whine, they kept working. So at the end of the day, now to become an NBA basketball player, you don't have to go to Kentucky and Duke no more. Yep. Those two, two, two top 75 players didn't. So just keep working, uh, be the best where you are in high school or college, and then just continue to leave me your dreams. Like, you never know what can happen, and always be prepared. Yep, appreciate it, my